Trigger warning. This is an introspective video featuring an individual named Jordan. He is struggling with addiction. He is struggling with homelessness. He is struggling in general. In this video, we seek to learn. We seek to understand. As a collective, we will seek to better our society. Thank you. What's your name, my friend? Jordan Espinoza. Jordan Espinoza. And what are you doing out here? Check out. What are you doing out here? Um, so, I'm an eight-year combat veteran that uh, got injured um, and kicked out of the Army because when I got injured, they found opiates in my system. But uh, I was put on pain medications from my injury uh, that I sustained from an IED attack in Afghanistan on my second tour. And uh, I got to take the opiates, it took me hard, and uh, I've been on and, off, on and off the streets ever since. But I recently got clean seven months ago and had serious surgery on my right arm several times because of really bad infections, almost lost my life, had a stroke from endocarditis. Um, and I'm just, I just got clean recently. So in another couple of weeks I'll be working and in another couple of months I'll be off the streets. Good. Good. So you have a plan. You you have that you still have that military mindset. It's been mindset. a long five years since I since I started this homeless journey. Wow, five, five years? years out here. Fucking Straight. hell, dude. And well, it's been many. I wake up every day. Sometimes, like I wish I could just kill myself, but the soldier in me won't allow me to do that. It'd be an insult to my brothers and sisters that I served with that lost their lives and don't have that choice. So, yeah, it's an insult. Okay. You're right. So, and now, has the has the VA helped you? Has the, yeah, I just started way? going to my compensation. The, see, the thing is, is when I was using, I didn't go to the VA to claim my benefits and go to my appointments. Uh, a misunderstanding is, it, you don't just come home from the military and boom, you get all your benefits. You have to go and do the paperwork, and go to the appointments, and prove you have the problems you have. Mm -hmm. And I haven't started to do that until recently. And uh, I'll, next month, I'll be getting uh, $980 a month starting next month. And uh, by then, I'll be working uh, in the part time job at the VA called Compensated Work Therapy. It's 20 hours of janitorial work in the hospital a week, no taxes for six months until you, and then they offer you a full time job. Mm -hmm. um, and then uh, I'll start that, and by I'm gonna get a hood voucher, voucher which is a military uh, subsidized housing voucher, and they'll take 30% of my income, whatever it is, no matter what the amount, they'll take 30% of it for my rent. Uh, so then I'll be looking for housing soon. But another thing I'm trying to do is is get into a 28 day program before I get into, or at least, you know, uh, well, a 28 day program. I have enough time, but get into some kind of program to before I start the CW2. Uh, just to get the curriculum of recovery drilled in a little more. I don't know, I've just been having a hard time. My mom killed herself eight months ago. We were found out three yeah. days before Mother's Day. And then I saw my dad, who I haven't seen in, I don't know, years, about a week ago, and ran into him in Hartford and uh, talked to him. And you know, we, spoke, we spoke about my, we, um, you okay? Yeah. He spoke about my mom. Come to find out two days later, it was too much for my dad, and he killed himself. So that's why my voice is like this. I've been crying and really depressed. And, uh, that, that, that really shook me. It's fucked up. You, yeah. Well, my voice usually isn't like this. I don't know if you remember. I don't really have this raspy voice. I've been crying. I've been fucking depressed. I've been... Just, I just... And I didn't really have it. It's not like I had a really good relationship with my dad. It's just straight, it fucks me up because my dad abandoned me, my mom was a baby. My mom desperately refused to abort me because she was madly in love with my dad and tried to use me to keep him around. That didn't work. And then, and then my dad admitted to me in person. He said, I never, I think this is why he did what he did because he had tears in his eyes. He said, I'm sorry. I never wanted to be a father, but I love you. I just never wanted to be a father. And he walked away from me not saying bye that day. Shit. Yeah. I kind of fucked him. I don't want to talk So, he walked away without saying bye? Yeah. Is that that, that salon parlor behind the gold pillar? 
one right next to it, the, the one that's like at the base of the parking garage. Yeah. It was really random and weird. I don't think it was about my mom. I think it was more like him seeing in the streets all fucked up, missing teeth like this, and just regretting never being a father because that probably would have changed things. Probably wouldn't be on the streets right now. If he was a father, he probably wouldn't be on the streets. You're saying if, if he had if a he was there when life, I was younger. Yeah. If he was you know, there when you were I would have had somebody to turn to so when I came home. This is a wake up call to all those people having kids when they're young and they exactly. want to pump and dump. If, if you, Even if you don't want to, once you do it, you're responsible. You're responsible that for that kid. That abortion stuff, that's not a choice. Be a grown up. Because it's not your life now, it's theirs. It's theirs. You have a responsibility. All your fun time is over. If you're big enough to f put your penis in a vagina, you're big enough to forfeit your fun time. If you yeah. can't do that, keep predicting your penis. You're ruining other people's life, an innocent child. You, you're an adult now. You had your time, you had your choices, and if you didn't spend the fun time you wanted before you did that, that's your problem. Doesn't mean you need to go and wreck another human being's future and emotions. But some people don't agree with that, and that's called selfishness. But I'm not here to criticize. You know? I'm just here to tell you this is the product of what happens. We're here to we're here to search for the truth and expose the truth. That's exactly what we're doing. Okay. And I appreciate you. Thank you. So tell me tell me tell me about uh, your military training, do you think it toughened you up to to stay healthy and out here? Just, oh shit, that's a good question. All right, so my military, I'm just gonna cock my leg up because I got my I got I got I don't see all the holes in my leg from the shrapnel. I have a bad left leg. Right. In there. So essentially, I had a lot of training, right? Um, one of them was land navigation. I have used that homeless, not just that, not out here, but I took a train from Hartford to Jacksonville, or from New London to Jacksonville, Florida, and was able to navigate myself just with a compass and a and crappy tourist map all the way to a location on Jack's Beach. Like, I've done things in the woods to survive. I've made it to three brutal winters. Uh, the military has facilitated my survival, period. <laughs> wow. Period. Wow. As a paratrooper, so I've some of the best survival training. Paratrooper? Yeah, 101st Airborne. Shit. 502nd Parachute. I was in a parachute infantry regiment, so you can be in 101st Airborne and be an accountant. Hmm. So don't let just somebody has an airborne patch be like, yeah, I was 100 first. Oh, you're a badass. Bro. That's a unit. Depending on where you are in the 101st makes you badass. You never knew that, huh? Well, I, well, yeah, I knew that. Well, that people go into the military and can get accounting jobs. They can be behind a computer. They can be like. Pretty much flying drones. What I'm saying, a lot of people don't know, like, you can be an accountant and be in the 101st Airborne. An accountant and be in the 101st, yeah. 101st, 101st Airborne. Airborne. But when you see the uniform, you see the Airborne tab, you're thinking mm. in your mind, Hollywood movies, he must be a paratrooper. Uh, no, he just did the paratrooper training and now he's an accountant. <laughs> <laughs> so. uh. He gets the uniform, but he, he wasn't he gets the really... Patch. He gets the patch. But he's not really the infantry side of the 101st. Uh, he's yeah. not the face of the 101st. I was the face of the 101st, which is the infantry. You were the infantry? I was the parachute infantry regiment. What's left of it. And the 101st Airborne now is not technically an airborne unit. They're primarily an air assault unit. They're helicopters. Air assault unit? Yeah. Helicopters? They, yeah. Uh, Chinooks and Blackhawks. And Little Mainly black uh, black hawks and chinooks. I I jumped and repelled. Uh, I haven't slept in like three days. Yeah, it sucks. Well, hey, that's a part of the. Um, that's part of the military too. Yeah, that's why I'm able to function. But it's because of what happened to my dad. It's 
So, okay. And just and it's been tough lately, just like I, I'm not using drugs. So it's hard for me to ask people for money or things that I need help with because people automatically think I'm lying. And that hits huge stress on me because I'm really not lying about what I need. Like, mm -hmm. a lot of people go to extra lengths to say no because they think there's some under, like, they're gonna sell that pizza for crack or, you know, you know. But, like, honestly, like, if somebody was to hand me 10, 15 bucks right now, I'd be able to get bandages until my next upcoming appointment on Wednesday. And speaking of bandages. Oh, yeah. Please tell me you're gonna help me because if I take I'll, this bandage gonna off, it's you. gonna be bad. I'm gonna I can't you. get it back on. That's what a lightning bug is here for. Alright. I can't take it all the way off because oh it's gonna God. hurt. And you're not here. But there's, there's a. And if I tell my man that you're not here so to protect me, he's gonna be mad at it's you. About the, it's about half the half the thickness of my pinky. Oh no, it's Hello? about the, the, the thick, from up and down thickness of my pinky deep that they, they took out. And then wide, it's about. It's about uh, three, three inches wide at the bottom, tapering off to two and three quarters, and then it starts to taper off. So it starts off at three inches and tapers up like this into, you know, into like a kind of like a taper. Uh, they removed all the flesh. I had gangrene twice. I went to a septic coma for a week. Um, and right now it's just gooey and gooey and nasty because I don't get to bathe. And uh, people are just really, just really hesitant to like give me money to go buy bandages, and then you know, or buy the bandages, which a lot of times a lot of people don't understand, like you know, or not not understand. They're like, why am I gonna go out of my way to go buy the bandages in the store that's all the way there? Yeah. And it's just like they, I get that. But. They just don't understand the fact that that you are. Uh, in serious need. Yeah, and I'm honest. If I was addicted to dope so heavily and I needed dope to not be dope sick, I'd just say that. If I was, I'm not an alcoholic, I've never been, I don't like drinking. But if I was drinking and I was an alcoholic and I was in withdrawal, so I would just tell somebody that and say, I need this to not feel like this. I can go to the hospital right this second, that doesn't mean they're gonna help me or they just, yeah. So, yeah. And people don't understand. The only thing that immediately feel better is that, and that's sometimes you just gotta straight up ask for what you need around the feet and not beat around the bush. You know. But, uh, today it was horrible because when I, when I, uh, I, I did try to get like an hour of sleep, but it wasn't. It was like at least thirty minutes. Thirty um, minutes of sleep. That's the most that you got. Yeah, I sat on the the bench at the Veterans Memorial across the Army and went Armory. The National Guard. I mean, when I woke up, I walked over to the gas station, and I just kept waking up in ten minutes, in ten minute intervals, standing up with people yelling at me. What are you doing? Go over there and sit down. And apparently, I was sitting there. It looked like I was dancing because I kept falling like this, falling asleep and waking up and falling back to sleep. Like I, 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 I mean, we uh -huh. call that in the military droning, and people thought I was high. But the crazy yeah. part was, if I was high, as soon as I woke up, I was completely coherent. Uh -huh. I'm like, I'm not high. And they're looking at me like, you must I, be. I would have thought you were high. But I wasn't because as soon as I woke up, I was completely wide and coherent. If I was high, I would be like, uh, you know what I mean? Yeah. So, yeah, immediately they, they were like, they, so, they, so, like, let's just, how did you get that okay, yeah, fucked up? Uh, so Boom. The fentanyl that I was using had this stuff called xylazine in it. Xylazine? And that's a horse tranquilizer that's not meant to be. Body. Now, I was missing my shots. I was doing speedballs, fentanyl, and cocaine. And when you miss your shots, you run risk of getting a skin infection and, a, a skin right. infection and an abscesses. I got both. And uh, the abscess, when they opened it and drained it, they gave me the oral antibiotics. They started me to street and it festered into gangrene twice. Gangrene? Twice. Yes. Fucking green. And they cut it, and that's why they had to cut the dead flesh out. You, know, you can lose your arm? Yeah, if they don't get to the dead flesh fast enough. So with gangrene, um, if the, the flesh becomes necrotic, if you if you if you remove that dead tissue, 
before it gets into your bloodstream and makes you septic, you can save the limb. But if it gets into the deeper than the fascia, into your bloodstream, into the bone marrow, now you have osteomyelitis with gangrene in it. You got to take the limb off. You cannot salvage a limb that has uh, gangrene inside the marrow. Osteomyelitis. Osteomyelitis is just a, a, a medical term word for a bone infection. Bone infection. Osteomyelitis. Osteo and then osteo, bone. and then osteonecrosis is what I would have had if gangrene bone. got in it, which is bone when death. it kills it. It kills basically gangrene inside the bone. It kills the marrow, which is irreparable. And uh, we can't have marrow uh, transplant because the gangrene also got into the bone and all the blood fluid and everything's in the poorest parts of the bone. So, so you, you, how long? Uh, okay, so you, you still, you still shoot? No, you're not shooting up. If I was, it wouldn't be healing. See the pink around it? It doesn't that, look it was like all that. Is, it doesn't look like it's fucking healing, dude. It looks really fucked. Well, it's because it's dirty. You see the pink around it? See this area? It yeah. was all the way out here. Your ID. Don't fuck me over, nigga. Just so, like it was all the way out here. It was <laughs> huge. It's just the area that's on the inside is exposed on a deep, deep, deep level. It's not like a high level. They took very deep levels of, of skin and off. So, mm. when you have that amount of low level flesh and not bathing like I do, it gets all nasty like that until you clean it. And the problem is, is I don't have the facilitation of proper bandages all the time. Technically, I'm supposed to clean it and change the bandages three to four times a day. I've only been able to maybe change the bandage every other day, if that. I clean it several why times. Not? Why not? Because I don't have money in the hospitals. The last time I went to the hospital, I asked for bandages. I sat there for seven hours, only for them to tell me, you were sleeping, that's why we didn't wake you up. They gave me one roll of gauze, which isn't gonna do me any good. And I sat there for seven hours, screwed the whole day away, and I missed- Were you sleeping? Minutes. Or were you nodding out? No, I was sleeping because I was waiting for them to call me, got up, asked them why haven't you guys called me and they gave me an attitude, and I needed to sleep. You needed I, to sleep? I needed to sleep, it was at, it was at nine o'clock at night. I, I was like, well, I am homeless. I need to sleep, so I figured, all right, I'll get some sleep, they'll wake me up, get what I need, and then I'll go, leave, and then go to my little sleep spot, and go back to sleep. So, um, the thing is, is that while I'm there, I also don't have time to go get the things I need, so I was there.